Our scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then, behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemies. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Okay. Well, first of all, happy Sabbath to you all. And I'll just go ahead and answer the question that everyone wants to know so we can just clear the air and enjoy the rest of the service. The baby is not here. Okay, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, but honestly, I want to thank everyone for your support over the past couple of weeks the the gifts the food the prayers it's been completely overwhelming and for us just coming into this district and being showered um by your love it's it's literally brought tears to our eyes so once again i want to thank you all i know rodney has done it but i also want to thank you all so much for your support um it's been a crazy couple of weeks <laughs> Um, there's been lots of prayers raised up from the Osborne house, and, and I'm so thankful that, you know, God likes our simple prayers. You know, there's been lots of prayers that's just been, Lord, help. Lord, help us now. <laughs> and um, he has answered those prayers, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, these past couple of weeks, our topic has been mental health. And today, we are going to talk about mental health, but what we're also going to talk about is how our mental health, our physical health, and spiritual health are all intertwined. Because in honesty, you can't really talk about mental health without talking about your body, and also without talking about your spiritual relationship with God and also with other people. So today we're gonna look at all of that together and we can go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, we thank you for another Sabbath day that you have given us to come together. Lord, being not in services for the past couple of weeks and coming back today really just shows me what you really mean for the Sabbath to be, a time for fellowship, a time to relax, Lord, and a time to get away from the things that really stress us out. Father, may your Holy Spirit join us now. Lord, may you speak through me and may you touch the hearts of everyone here as they listen. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Mirror his image. So one of the most traumatic experiences a person can face in their life is that of losing a limb. And if you've ever had a broken arm or a broken leg, you could probably relate to those temporary feelings of frustration, hopelessness, anger. But for amputees, there's a new therapy that's called mirror therapy. And it provides hope to people who are amputees. And what happens is that a mirror is put between the functional limb and the missing limb. So for example, in this picture, you would see that as the right hand moves, the reflection would obviously move. 
And so the brain is tricked into believing that the left hand is present. And so what this does is that it leads to less pain, less medication, and increased quality of life. Now, Genesis 1 verses 27 states that we were made in the image of God. But if we were to be honest with ourselves, if we were to compare ourselves to God's image, we're missing some limbs, right? A whole lot of limbs. But we're told in the word of God that beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are transformed into that same image. But what does that image look like? Ellen White, Christian author, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives us a little bit of insight of what that might be. And she says, when Adam came from the creator's hand, he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature a likeness to his maker. Now, I want to use my imagination here because we don't really see what, what does it mean to physically look like God. But I would assume that they were very healthy. I would assume they, had, uh, glow, they were glowing and they were happy. And I would assume that they had 100% perfect health. Is that safe? Yeah. I would assume that mentally, they were always joyful. I would assume that they were quite intelligent. They were full of wisdom. And as the years went by, God would intend for them to get more and more wisdom and more and more understanding. And spiritually, we know that they enjoyed face-to-face -face communion with God. I'm assuming they enjoyed being in obedience and in relationship with God. We see in the life of Jesus that this was also mirrored. It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and with man. I would assume, there we go, that in favor with God and man is spiritual. Also, growing in wisdom would be mental, and growing in stature would be physical. So Christ himself, the express image of God, he was physically, mentally, and spiritually like his maker. And that's what God intended for us. But something changed. By disobedience, this was forfeited. Through sin, the divine likeness was marred and well nigh obliterated. Man's physical powers were weakened, his mental capacity lessened, and his spiritual vision dimmed. He became subject to death. Now, we can relate to this. Because physically, there's not one of us in here that's not been touched by illness. Mentally, not one of us can say that we've never been, uh, had grief, sorrow, anger. And spiritually, we can all say that God has brought us into a saving relationship with him. But in this statement, even though it says that God's image was well nigh obliterated, it brings us hope. Because well nigh, it means almost, it means nearly or not quite accomplished. So there's hope even in this statement that God's image was almost wiped out. It was nearly wiped out, but it was not quite accomplished. And that should bring us hope. And this is why it should bring us hope. Because of Jesus and what he has done. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus, when he came, our race was not left without hope. By infinite love and mercy, the plan of salvation had been devised and a life of probation was granted. To restore in man what? The image of his maker. To bring us back to the perfection for which we were created. To promote the development of body, mind, and soul that the divine purpose in his creation might be realized. This was the work of redemption. Jesus came to restore us back to the image of God, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Now you're wondering why, how does this relate to our health? I'm glad you asked. According to the World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So health is much more than not having high blood pressure, it's much more than not having diabetes, it's much more than not having cancer. Health is about being physically, mentally, and socially well. Now when I think about social, I think about relationships. And relationships for us is with God and also with one another. 
So I see this statement as health being a state of complete physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. Now, which of these three does society focus on more? Physical, great, I'm physical. But if there's a man with bulging biceps, but he beats his wife every night, is he considered healthy? No. Right, if there is a man with six pack abs who, um, he's an alcoholic and he's depressed, would he be considered healthy? No, he wouldn't be, right? And for women, what does society say you should have a body that's shaped like? Skinny, thank you. So I saw someone do the shape, thank you. Shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, right? That's what they say, right? And, and I always hated that because God didn't make me a Coca-Cola bottle. God made me a Coca-Cola can. That's what he made me, right? <laughs> but if I had a Coca-Cola bottle, but I was crying myself to sleep every single night, would that be considered healthy? No. See, health is so much more than bulging biceps, six-pack abs, and hourglass figures. Health is about mirroring God's image. And as we read in our scripture, we'll see that when Jesus heals, he heals in all those three areas. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 2, as we go back to our scripture, I read it again, and we'll see that Jesus heals and restores us back to the image of God. Matthew 9, verses 1 through 2. So he got into a boat, he crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, now, I'm going to stop here for a little, because when the word says their faith, who is they're referring to? The men who brought him, his friends. And so the people we surround us with, they have a lot to do with how they affect our mental health. And if you've been around someone who's angry, bitter, and unforgiving all the time, you know how that feels and how it affects your mind. You know, uh, maybe a week after the baby was born, when I was completely lost, I still am probably lost, but I was in an extreme fog, and I was at a place where I needed someone to talk to. And it just so happened that Gina sent me a text message. And she let me know that to let her know if I needed anything. And so I said, you know what? Yeah, can you just come over to talk? And she thought she was coming over to hear me talk but she was coming to hear me cry because that's pretty much all I did when she came to visit. I just cried for her whole visit. But during that time, there was so much going on. I couldn't see, I couldn't see through the fog. I couldn't see that things would get better. I, I couldn't see that in a couple of years that you know I'm gonna look back on this time and apparently I'm gonna wanna go back to this time period, right? <laughs> right, I couldn't see that. But Gina, because of her faith, because I didn't have any at that time, and I still, I'm still struggling, just to be honest with you. But because of her faith, it helped to slowly help me through the gloom. Your friends and who you surround yourself with can affect your mental health. As we continue to read, it says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer. Your sins, have forgiven. Your sins are forgiven you. Now in that statement, when he says, son, be of good cheer, is that a restoration of physical, mental, or spiritual health? Son, be happy. Mental health. Jesus is telling him at that moment, be happy. And there's a connection between our mental health and our physical health. Here we go. The relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than many realize. Many of the diseases from which men suffer are the result of mental depression, grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, guilt, distrust, all tend to break down the life forces and to invite decay and death. Now, how does this work? Well, if we're depressed, I don't know about you all, but when I'm feeling down and depressed, and let's say you go to the supermarket. But if you're depressed, 
do you have like a lettuce with like tomato, onions, and you know, low fat dressing? You know, is that what we eat when we're depressed and when we're feeling sad and down? If you do, all me, <laughs> more power to you. But more often than not, what are we eating? What are we consuming? What are we not doing when we are in a state of mental depression? Someone said, Little Debbie, thank you for your honesty. Ice cream, thank you. Thank you for being honest. Some churches, they just went dead silent. I'm like, you guys are lying. You know really good and well, right? Ice cream, Little Debbie's, right? French fries. You know, these things that we don't, these things that aren't good for us. Are we going out to exercise when we're depressed? No, we want to stay inside. We don't want to move. We, want, we don't want to leave the bed. We don't want to talk to people. So the, the accumulation of those things, those things can lead to disease. Now, what was the true cause? Was it those things or was it the state of my mental health at the time? It's the state of my mental health. Our mental health can lead to physical disease in our bodies. This is why the Bible says that a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit, it dries up the bones. And the Bible, which we shouldn't be surprised, it was well ahead of its time. Because we know that stress, anxiety, depression, it affects almost every system in your body. Chronic stress, chronic depression, it affects your brain, it affects your ability to concentrate, it affects your immune system, it decreases your immune function if you're depressed and if you're sad, chronically. Look, this quote, your emotions affect every cell in your body, mind and body, Mental and physical are intertwined. One minute of anger suppresses your immune system for how long? Six hours. But one minute of laughter stimulates your immune system for 24 hours. So if you were angry this morning, everyone just go ahead and get a laugh in just to cover yourself. <laughs> go ahead and stimulate your immune system. Our mental health is so important. I love this quote. It says, the events we call tragedies. Has anyone ever had a tragedy? The events we call setbacks and failures, those things are opportunities for God. He knows how to draw glory even from our ruin. The hour of deepest humiliation, when we feel defective and utterly disqualified, may be the hour that God uses us in unparalleled ways. Can you imagine the times when we feel the lowest? God looks at that and he says, that's an opportunity for me to work in your life. Years of wasted effort may be the years when God plants an eternal harvest. Though we have fished all night and caught nothing, the great angler is still double baiting his hooks. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Health is so much more than bulging biceps, six pack abs, and hourglass figures. Health is about being physically, mentally, and spiritually well and mirroring God's image. When we go back to our scripture, he says, son, be of good cheer. He says, your sins are forgiven you. Now this is the easy one. At this moment, what part is Jesus healing and restoring? His spiritual health, right? He's saying to him, your sins are forgiven you. There's something about the guilt that comes from not being obedient and from having a broken relationship with God. It wears down on us. There's a quote that says that shame, that shame thrives in secrecy. So when we know that we're doing something that's not in alignment with God or in relationship with other people, when we keep that in, it thrives. It, shame thrives, shame grows, and it breaks us down from the inside out. But when we're in right relationship with God, it's healing. It's healing to our souls. It brings us peace. We see this in scripture. David is a perfect example of how sin can affect us mentally and physically. In Psalm 38, David says, there is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long, I go about mourning. My day is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. 
I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. That is the pen of a man who has been weighed down by a sin. Can you feel his pain as, you, as I read that? Can you feel? He says his back hurts because of his sin. His bones hurt because of his sin. But it's amazing that when God heals us, he provides spiritual healing as well. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives our sins and he does what? He heals our diseases. There's a connection between our physical health, our spiritual health, and our mental health. But not only forgiveness from God, but also forgiveness between other people. They found that those who forgive easily, they have greater psychological well-being and less depression than those who hold grudges. Unforgiveness, I've seen a lot of people who are depressed, who are suicidal, who aren't living their best life because they're holding on to, to unforgiveness. And what's amazing is that the other person that's been in that offending relationship, they've gone on. They've lived, they're living their lives, they're, they're living their best lives. But then this person is so holding on to that bitterness and anger and unforgiveness that their life is just withering away. You know, forgiveness is not something we do for other people. We do it for ourselves to get well and to move on. See, our spirituality, God has designed to be a protective factor. They found that those who have high intrinsic religion, okay, so what that means, is intrinsic religion means your, your religion is sincere and it's genuine and it's mature. So for those who have a high scores of intrinsic religion, they recover fast from depression, faster than those who have extrinsic religion. Extrinsic, as you, you would guess, is it's just, I'm just doing it just to do it. I'm just, I'm just here. Religion, I'm just, it's just uh, something that I'm just walking through life with. It's called an immature religion. So when we're spiritually in right relationship with God, it's protective for our mental health. Because health is much more than bulging biceps. It's more than six-pack abs. And it's more than hourglass figures. It's about mirroring God's image. As we go back to the scripture, and I'm winding down here, we see that Jesus finally, in the, the verses, he heals the man physically. In verse 6, Jesus says, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. The state that we are in physically can affect our mental health. Ministers, do we have any ministers in here? Have cup elders, yeah, yeah. Teachers, oh, we have some teachers in here. Don't let me pull you out. Go ahead. Teachers, we do have some teachers. Students, do we have any students? Yeah. All right. And any other brain workers? Anyone else who uses your brain? Do we have any of those here? Okay. All right. They often suffer illness as the result of severe mental taxation, unrelieved by physical exercise. What these persons need is a more active life. Strictly temperate habits combined with what? Combined with exercise. It ensures both mental and physical vigor and would give power of endurance to all brain workers. So just movement, just exercise, it affects our mental health. In this diagram here, on the left, what you see is a brain at rest, right? So this is just 20 minutes of sitting and doing nothing. And the blue area, it shows that there's a dip in focus and a dip in attention. But the brain on the right is an EEG after the person's been exercising for about 20 minutes. And so you see more red, you see more yellow. And what this tells us is that it's more focus, more attention, and the ability to process information faster. So exercise literally helps us to focus better. It affects our mental health. It helps us to make better decisions. It helps us to respond to stress faster. And so when this becomes an active part of your life, it protects you. It protects your mind. You know, there are some sources that found, some research that found that consistent exercise 
is just as beneficial as antidepressants for mild depression. And they found that remission, so going back to depression, that those who exercise compared to those who had medication, those who exercise, they had less remission than those who took medication. Now, I'm not telling you to go throw your medication out by any means. What I'm telling you is that physical exercise can protect your mental health. I like this. It says exercise is a dirty word. Every time I hear it, I wash my mouth out with chocolate. <laughs> That's how we respond sometimes to exercise. But any little bit that we do is beneficial. That was 20 minutes of walking. You know, we don't have to go and, you know, do a million of lifting weights. And sometimes it's discouraging when you see videos of people exercising. You feel, I can't exercise. These people are doing backflips off benches and, you know, they're doing a whole bunch. But walking, just walking, is enough for us to see the benefits to our mental health. Jesus restored this man physically. But in this day and age, we don't always see that, right? We see little ones sometimes who have cancer that don't get healed. There are accidents. Dick Bascom, right? There are people who lived what you would say a perfect, healthy lifestyle, but they still die of cancer. How do we respond to those things? Well, Jesus still heals. It may not be right now, but it'll be on the other side of eternity, amen? And that brings us hope. That brings us hope. You know, when I think about life now and just everything, physical, mental, and spiritual health, it's a hard time to be alive right now. Between COVID, between riots, between your own personal stressors, right? It's a wonder that we're even here. And it's tempting to question God. It's tempting to wonder, where are you working in my life right now? Because I'm being faithful and there's nothing that's changing. Sometimes it gets worse. I think about the words of William Cowper. He says, judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. Now, William Cowper, you may more so know him for the, he penned the hymn, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. And in his life, it was very dark and very melancholy. He attempted to commit suicide multiple, multiple times. He had a rough life. His mother and four of his siblings, they were killed by the time he was six. And his father sent him away to a boarding school where he was bullied for many, many, many years. So that was the foundation of a, a hard life for him. And in the midst of one of his breakdowns, he had about four major mental health breakdowns. His friends, your friends, his friends committed him to an asylum at that point. And while he was there, he was uh, under the care of a Christian who helped him through scriptures and through him writing. And so this quote that I just read is from one of his hymns, God Works in Mysterious Ways. And so I have the song. It's a modern version of the song, but it's all the same lyrics. And so as you hear it, as you are struggling with your own trials, with your own temptations, with your own lack of physical, mental, or spiritual health. Listen to the words of the song and may it bring you hope as it brought me hope. And then we'll pray when we get back. God moves in a mysterious way His wonders to perform He plants His footsteps in the sea And rides upon the storm And deep in us Searchable minds are 
never failing skill He treasures up His bright designs and works His sovereign will And ye fearful saints press courage take the clouds you so much dread I'll be with mercy and shall break in blessings, in blessings, in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust Him for His grace. Behind a frowning providence, He rides a smiling face. His purposes will ripe and fast unfolding every hour his own interpreter and he will make it plain in his own time in his own way and in his own time in his own way we trust your time and we trust your way Fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds you so much dread are filled with mercy and shall break. And mercies on your head. Does anyone need courage today? Would you stand with me? Let's pray for courage. We live in hard times. But the clouds are filled with mercy. And one day they will break much blessings on our head. Let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your Holy Spirit that works through men to write songs and hymns that pen the things that are going on in our hearts and minds, but we can't find the right words to say. Lord, we don't always understand the things we go through in this life, Father. But we understand your love. We understand your heart. Lord, we know that one day you will make the way plain for us. Father, 
there are some here under the sound of my voice, including myself, who are in need of restoration of mental health, Lord. Lord, some of us are depressed, angry, unforgiving, bitter. Lord, heal us. Father, some of us are mentally ill because we're not physically well. Lord, I pray that if it's in your will, that you would provide complete physical healing to those who need it today. Father, there are some who are not mentally well because spiritually they are ill. They are not in right relationship with you or with others. Lord, please provide healing spiritually. Father, this world is sometimes too much for us to walk through. But we know that Christ came and he came to restore in us the image of God, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So as we continue to go through life, as we continue to go through today, Father, help us to take it day by day. Lord, may we remember that our health, Father, our health is so much more than bulging biceps, six-pack abs, and hourglass figures, Lord. Health is about mirroring your image. And may every day we look at your word, may we listen to music, may we watch things, may we interact with people, Lord, who will fill us up so that we can, we too can be the express image of God, just like Christ was. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray, amen.